Hello and thank you for watching. Today I want to show you how to use the QNAP backup with the Wasabi Cloud Service. If you're interested in using your QNAP with a low cost cloud provider, then stay tuned for the rest of the video. As always, if you've not already done so, please subscribe and hit that notification icon so you'll be notified of future content. Okay, before we can set up the QNAP to work with uh, Wasabi, the first thing we need to do is to actually sign up with a Wasabi Cloud account. Now they are offering a 30-day free trial, no credit card required, so I would suggest you take advantage of it. Um, I'll put a link in the description, and just to be clear, they're not a sponsor of any type. I'm just talking about the product, and I use the product because I really like it. I actually had tried it once when they first when I first heard about it and um, had a lot of trouble with it. Didn't work very well with the QNAP backup. Performance was extremely bad. Um, it just didn't do, didn't live up to my expectations. But I decided to try it again after hearing quite a bit about it. And what I found is they've actually, between the updates to the QNAP backup and um, whatever changes Wasabi made, the performance was dramatically different so now it runs really well very smooth no hang-ups um, no errors that i was seeing on the original trial so all in all i've been very happy with it so with that in mind let's go ahead and get started now that you've created your account so when you actually get into the screen you'll see something like what you're seeing on my screen you're kind of greeted with the first section which is called buckets now if you're not familiar with buckets it's Think of it as a high level folder. It's a grouping. So basically everything we're gonna do, we're gonna put in, inside this bucket. So we're gonna create one so you can see, get an idea of how it's created. Um, this is more about how to configure QNAP to Wasabi more than it is about how to set up Wasabi, but we'll go a little bit into both so you can kind of get an idea of how it works. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a bucket. Now I've got one created already, but I'm gonna do, do another one so you can see how it's set up. And we'll just call it QNAP test. Now, um, one thing you'll have to do is select a region and depending on where you're located. So since I'm on the West Coast, I'm gonna pick West. And that's all we need. We don't need this optional setup right now. So let's go to next. Now here you can enable versioning if you want. Um, I tend to not do that um, because it basically takes up more storage. But if what you're storing up there is important that you be able to go back to an earlier version, then you can enable ver in, uh, versioning. So we're gonna hit next. Basically it gives us a summary and we hit create bucket. So now it's created the bucket. You can see it's now on my screen and we're now ready to use it for things. But before we can actually configure it with the backup, we actually need to use what's called access keys. Because the only way that QNAP is going to be allowed to communicate with Wasabi is by the use of the API keys. So if we click on access keys, we'll see right now that there's a key already created. So I'm going to create a new one. And it's going to be, we're going to leave it for root user. And we're going to hit create. Creates the key. And now I'm going to make sure you want to click here to show the secret key. So I'm going to go ahead and show that secret key. Um, now at this point, you can copy these field by field into QNAP, which we'll get into a little bit later. Or for, for now, you can download the CSV file. So I would suggest if you haven't worked with this before, and you don't quite know what to copy where, that you actually use download the CSV file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I don't need this anymore. Now bear in mind, once you close this, the secret key is no longer ever going to be seen again. So once you close it, it's gone. Um, so you wanna make sure that you've got it copied or whatever from here. So I'm gonna cancel this because I don't really need this key. But you can see it's already created it. So once we've created the keys, um, we basically are done here and we can go over to um, QNAP and set that up. So why don't we go ahead and shoot over there. Okay, so now that we're in the hybrid backup three, uh, what I want to do is actually do a couple things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do create a sync job. So I'm going to go ahead and create one way sync. And then I'm going to scroll down here to where it says Wasabi. In order for, for the QNAP um, 
hybrid backup sync to actually communicate with Wasabi, it needs the two pieces of information. That's the access key and the secret key. And if you recall, that's the ones that we actually downloaded. So um, those are in the CSV file that we actually downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those in. And I'm going to hit create. So now it's created a, a new uh, cloud account for me called Wasabi One. And I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And here it's asking me for the bucket name. And if I look under here, I can see the buckets that I have on the screen that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and pick QNAP test, hit select. And this is where I actually am going to configure the folders. So the first thing is I'm going to pick my local folders. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the download folder. Click OK. And the next thing I want to do is I want to select where it's going on the bucket. So you can see it says Wasabi QNAP test. So I'm going to go ahead and it's going to pull down the test. What I want to do is highlight the bucket and I want to create a new folder and I'm going to call it the same as my other folder. I'll call it download. And I'm going to click make that new folder. So you can see the hierarchy. I'm going from bucket to folder. That folder matches the origination folder just because that's the way I want it. So I'm going to click OK. Hit Next. And here's where my typical scheduling stuff goes. So I can actually use the scheduler. Um, I can run once um, or no schedule at all. And I can sync right now. So I'm going to leave the uh, no schedule for now. And we'll just do it manually when we're done here. Hit Next. And then here again, I don't need anything to uh, be selected here. There's really not much here. There's some uh, optional policies I can set using rate limits and things. Um, nothing really significant. So I'm going to hit Next. And then I'm going to Create. So now you see that I've got a one-way sync job, which it's identified here one way. And it goes from the local NAS to the Wasabi Cloud. And I'm going to go ahead and run this now. It'll take a few minutes, so I'll probably just jump ahead. Okay, and as you can see, it's already completed. There wasn't a lot of files in that. And basically, I'm done. So this now gives me the option to store uh, a lot of the a lot of my folders, at least the critical folders, out to a cloud storage that I can quickly access either through a website or through the program itself and restore my data. So it makes it really simple to get that, to get your data backed up. And if you look into Wasabi, you'll find the pricing is actually considerably less than AWS, even though it is an AWS service. They do use the AWS cloud for their business. It's significantly less. Um, I've already have AWS, so I can look at the price comparison. I can tell you it costs much less to use Wasabi and access in the data. They don't charge you. So it's actually a pretty good deal. Um, and it's hot storage, so you can get it anytime you want. If you need to pull down a file, you can get access to it instantly. It's not an archival type cloud where you know, you store it and you have to wait six hours in order to get a couple of files down like Glacier. This is actually um, real time hot storage. So that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and select that notification icon so you'll be notified of future videos. And if you like this video, don't forget to throw it a like. We'll see you on the next one.